what happened to you going, I want to be an entrepreneur? What took you from leaping into the known into the unknown? Sure. So from a Procter & Gamble standpoint, within a, a safe corporate entity in the United States, maybe even Europe, we could argue, uh, fairly structured, uh, it's, it's regimented, and, and you had a clear path. Um, in the late 90s, when I was coming into to Asia, China had just been turned or turned back, sorry, Hong Kong had just been, the handover just happened back to China. Uh, we were having riots in Indonesia, Malaysia was crazy. It was still kind of, you know, the wild, wild west, you know, was happening. So what I realized pretty quickly as an expatriate in Asia, I understood for the first time what it was to be like an entrepreneur because that safe infrastructure that you had in corporate America really wasn't there. And so I had autonomy, Jeff. Uh, you, you, you could just take this machine of people and you could go drive something that you saw without a huge amount of corporate structure. And there was so much white space, you know, we were literally coming into countries and, and helping country un under understand what a universal product code was, a UPC barcode. And it was just this craziness of technology that was happening. And so it was just exciting. Everything was happening. And then what I knew pretty quickly after a couple of years in Hong Kong, when I just started back in Bangkok, I knew I didn't want to go back to a cubicle in Cincinnati, Ohio. I knew I didn't want to do that. But what was happening is, is that as I started that first of three years in Bangkok, uh, the company asked for 2,000 volunteers that were interested in taking a package to volunteer to leave the company. I had a good friend of mine, Henry Ho, who was back here in Northwest Arkansas working for the PNG team. We'd worked in Hong Kong together. And he said, Rick, we should take these corporate packages and use it as seed money. Let's go start our version of Procter & Gamble, the customer team, that concept. Let's go do that for all the other consumer product groups here in Northwest Arkansas. We can make this thing happen. And so I was really struggling with that. And then back at my home church in Florida, where I transferred from, uh, they were wanting me to come back and be a business manager. And so I had two kind of interesting entrepreneur opportunities. I knew I didn't want to go back into the real corporate world. And so when I left, made the decision to come to Northwest Arkansas. Jeff, we started on September 1st. It was great. We're going to make this thing work. On September 11th, I had our first business trip. We're going to see our first client, Jeff. We're using all of our savings. We're excited. We're a band of brothers. We're on the flight. We get to the airport and our flight gets canceled. And we realize we're going to miss our very first client call. We're going to wow. miss it. Now, we were staying with friends. We had no money. We're staying with their home, no hotel. But we're going to make this entrepreneurial thing work, right? Uh, we had just adopted uh, a child from China. I'm telling her I've got no car, no house, no job, but daddy loves you. It's all going to be okay. So I'm here in this airport. And I look at my business partner. I said, we're toast. I guess we're going to go get a cup of coffee. And Jeff, as we walked into the to cafe, we saw the second plane hit the World Trade Center. It was September 11th, 2001. Yep. We started our entrepreneurial journey the day the United States changed. For the next six months, no one wanted to talk to anyone. There was no business. And I sat around to have to explain to my father-in-law why I made a decision to leave corporate America, <laughs> start this job, and we're all looking at each other saying, what have we done? That was our beginning, Jeff.